A dog is a dog. That's so obvious, isn't it? A dog is a dog. It isn't anything else. When you look at a dog or hear it barking or growling or whining, you never mistake the dog for anything else. You know that it's a dog, no doubt. There is a very big chunk of the population who look at a dog and see something other than a dog. They get confused. They get bewildered. Their mind plays tricks because they look at a dog and believe that they see a human. Some people see a stranger's dog in the street and they seem to believe that the dog is human, usually a human child. They will talk to the dog, ask it questions, address it directly using the second person pronoun you. They might say something like, you are a lovely boy, aren't you? Dogs have no concept of self and the uniqueness of personal identity. Some animals do, but self-awareness has never been demonstrated in a dog. The concept of being referred to as you is totally lost on them. There's one YouTube video in which a pit bull owner gets indignant when someone calls her dog it. She angrily replies, he's not an it, he has a name you know. Her dog has a name because she gave it one, but it has no understanding of the concept of naming because it is a dog, not a child. People will speak to a dog as if it is a child, using baby words and a higher-pitched, slowed-down way of talking. I covered this in detail in my video, Heckin' Bad Woofer. Dogs understand a very limited range of words, usually ones that are trained into it, or that it hears regularly and associates with its own pleasure, such as words associated with food or going for a walk. They do not understand sentences or abstract concepts. They will never answer you back because they are dogs. Some people believe that they are human and indulge in social pleasantries with it as if they were talking to a human. Human-type language in respect of dogs creeps into our daily existence and dogs get referred to as boys and girls. These are not appropriate terms for animals, and yet we hear them every day, and we accept them as normal, usual, and appropriate. A male child is a boy, and a female child is a girl. We have become accustomed to dogs being described as boys and girls. The correct term for a male dog is a dog, or more rarely, a sire. The correct term for a female dog is a bitch. In human society, the word bitch is a serious insult when applied to a human female. The reason for this is that it reflects the contempt that people had for dogs in the past. People who think that dogs are humans believe that the application of the word bitch to a dog is as insulting as this word when applied to humans. They think that dogs have human feelings, human sensibilities, and human understanding of the social consequences of language. Using the terms boy and girl elevates dogs and gets us accustomed to accepting that these creatures are equal to humans or replacements for humans. They are neither of these things. By accepting the terms boy and girl, we accept these creatures as having a deserved place in human society as part of that society. We accept that they have as much right to human society as real boys and girls. Dogs exist in human society as do rats, pigeons, and a number of other animals, but none of them are part of human society. That position belongs only to humans. Dogs are dogs. They are nothing else. They are not human. They do not have human characteristics. They are dogs. What characteristics they have are dog characteristics. To suggest anything different is naive or stupid or manipulative. 
There are distinct manipulative advantages to claiming that dogs are human, and I will return to that later. The deceptive language confusing dogs with humans continues from boys and girls to sons and daughters, fur babies, fur kids, and family members. Dogs are none of these things. The deception continues with reference to dogs being adopted or attending daycare, aping the language of childcare. Dogs are not adopted. They are either purchased or gifted. Calling it adoption does not camouflage the fact that a transaction has taken place and property has changed ownership. I can anticipate some people thinking that this is all a bit of fun. It's a trivial matter talking to your dog or about your dog as if it is human. What harm can it do? Owners of other pets talk to their animals as if they were children and as if the animal could understand them. Dog owners are not unique in this. They are unique in that they do this in public. They are unique in that they introduce their animals into human recreation spaces. People don't take parrots, hamsters, rabbits, or snakes into cafes and stores and then talk to them as if they are children. They are unique in that many of them seem to believe that their dog literally is a human and is related to them. At least that's what they say, and I have to believe them. This is not a trivial matter, because once society accepts that dogs are boys and girls and family members that can be adopted, then society has entered into a state of suggestibility and gullibility that can be exploited for political purposes. The apparently trivial belief that dogs are like humans provides a foundation and a framework in which people can be manipulated to accept that dogs are entitled to the same rights, privileges, and legal protections as humans. I will illustrate what I mean by discussing some of the claims made by the pro-pitbull lobby. One of the more extravagant claims is that if you express any fear or concern about how dangerous pitbulls are, then you are a racist. This is a very controlling tactic because people tend to get very defensive when they are accused of racism. The natural response is to start explaining why you are not racist. Your critical faculties have been overridden and you have been persuaded that racism is an appropriate theory to explain the fear of a powerful predator. The constant repetition of false claims about the humanity of dogs makes people vulnerable to accept that dogs should be judged by human standards. This becomes important when the pro-pitbull lobby wants to oppose or repeal breed-specific legislation. Legislators who themselves buy into the idea that dogs are equivalent to humans are predisposed to believe that breed-specific legislation is racism. They are suckers for the it's the deed, not the breed mantra, a mantra that is an appeal against what they claim is racial discrimination. It is like hypnotism. There are different types of hypnotic induction techniques, but many of them rely on repetition because repetition is a powerful persuader. Politicians and others who seek to influence us use it all the time, and the pro-pitbull lobby is no different. Because society has bought into the concept of dogs being good boys and girls, the pitbull lobby seizes on that willingness to believe and takes it a few steps further. They want to persuade us that dogs should be subject to exactly the same standards, perceptions, and legal protections as humans. It is worth noting that these arguments extend to dogs alone and no other animals. The reason why dogs are to be singled out in this way has never been explained in any scientific, rational, or provable way. 
I have discussed this differential treatment of animals in other videos because it is a recurring theme in the field of dog worship. Race and racism are constructs devised by humans, for humans, about humans. They are not constructs about dogs. Struggles for civil liberties were never about dogs. Gender equality and the feminist movement were never about dogs. LGBT plus advocacy was never about dogs. These were all human movements fighting for the rights, freedom, and liberation of humans from discrimination and prejudice. These were hard-fought struggles that are still going on, but pit bull advocates have had the audacity to hijack the gains of these movements and apply them to dogs. This is cross-species appropriation. The terrible thing is that politicians and legislators get wrong-footed by this manipulation and fall over themselves to naively accommodate the gaslighting of these pitbull-loving tricksters. The rest of society sleepwalks along with it as if it makes sense. Dogs are dogs. They are not human. In my recent video, I just don't get it. I mentioned the bumper sticker that claims my pit bull is smarter than your honor student. This stupidity is another consequence of believing that dogs are family members and therefore members of human society. If they can persuade you that their pit bull is indeed as intelligent as an honor student, then you are ready to believe that a dog should not only have the same entitlements as a human, but that dog behavior should be explained by the same theories as human behavior. We are all familiar with the campaigns to save killer dogs from euthanasia. The usual arguments are that dogs are entitled to the same legal counsel and due legal process as a human. I've never heard of demands to provide legal counsel and an appeals procedure for a cow, a sheep, or a pig being led to the slaughterhouse. Jim C., one of my viewers, posted a comment on my last random shit video. He wrote, Chris Hemden, Denver City Councilman, is quoted as saying, quote, From my experience, I have recognized that it is not the breed of the dog, but how it is raised, end quote. It is arguing from the specific to the general, and it is lacking in any scientific support. It is also based on a false belief that the true nature of the dog is to be gentle and loving. In this belief system, any deviation from the supposed true nature of the dog must have been brought about by external forces such as upbringing, environment, or human intervention. You'll recognize this thinking with victim blaming and assertions that there is no such thing as a bad dog. This is anti-scientific. It is absurd to believe that the nature of a predatory animal is anything other than predatory. They have hijacked ideas from studies in human behavior, namely the nature versus nurture debate. By doing so, they have got us to accept the ridiculous concept that thinking and behavior in dogs is just as sophisticated as in humans, end quote. Explaining human behavior is complex. The problem is in explaining how much of our behavior is to do with our nature and how much of it is to do with our upbringing and experiences in life. The nature part of the explanation is around how much of our behavior is part of us at birth, and the nurture part of any explanation is to do with how we interact with the environment. People have been discussing this for hundreds of years, contemplating whether humans are essentially good or essentially bad. The nature versus nurture discussion has influenced our approaches to such things as child rearing and criminology. Dog worshippers tell us that there is no such thing as a bad dog. If that is true, 
then they must believe that the essential nature of dogs is to be gentle, kind, and loving. They never explain what they mean by the word bad, so it is left to our imaginations. I have taken the absence of badness to be evidenced by the presence of kindness, love, and compassion. I've seen no evidence of this, but that seems to be what they are implying. In support of this claim that dogs are essentially good by nature is the often repeated statement that a dog is the only creature that loves you more than it loves itself. Again, no proof is ever provided for the accuracy of this statement or even what it means. Ignorant and stupid nonsense seems to breed more ignorant and stupid nonsense. According to dog worshippers, when dogs destroy, maul, maim, and kill, as they often do, then it cannot possibly be in their nature. It must be something else that makes them behave in these ways. If it's not in their nature, then it must be their environment. It must be how they are raised. After all, humans are sensitive to influences in their upbringing, so why not dogs? For this explanation to work, we have to accept that dogs are as smart as humans and have human-like qualities. We have to accept that dogs perceive and interact with the world in the same way as humans. For this contrick to work, we need to accept that dogs are just like humans when they are obviously not. I'm not going to go into the differences between canine thinking and human thinking. I'm not going to go into the rational superiority of the human brain versus the animal brain. If you think that a dog is the equivalent of a human, then there is something very wrong with you. No amount of logic, scientific observation, and reasoning are going to change your beliefs. Anyone who actually believes that dogs are equivalent to or superior to humans is monumentally stupid and gullible. Anyone who peddles these beliefs for their own purposes whilst not believing them is monumentally manipulative and amoral. Take your pick. My view is dogs are dogs and humans are humans. They are unrelated species. <laughs> <laughs>